I want to share on how God wants you blessed. Look at your neighbor and say, God wants you blessed. Now look at your other neighbor and say, God wants you blessed. See, we have to accept that reality above everything else. That has to become truth in our life. Amen. God doesn't want you broke. He does not want you struggling from paycheck to paycheck. He doesn't want you living in poverty. He doesn't want your children living in welfare. No, he is a blessed God. He wants to give you that blessing. Amen. But there's things that we have to realize. Go with me to Deuteronomy 8, 18. And if we can put it on the screens in the New King James Version, because I have my New Living Translation Bible. (laughs) I have so many Bibles now, and they're all different, different languages, different translations. Uh, Deuteronomy 8.18, New King James Version says, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get what? That he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. First, we have to see this is God's word. It's not my opinion. It's not my word. This is the word of God. And first and foremost, we see that we have to remember the Lord our God. In everything we do, we are to honor him and remember him. Amen. Because he is the one who gives us what? Who gives us what? Power. He is the one who gives us power to get wealth, to be successful, to have favor. So we have to remember the Lord our God because he is the one working in us and through us to put us above and not beneath, to make us the head and not the tail. See, this word has to be established in your life. You have to take it as yours. I can serve the food. But you have to get up and eat it. This is the word of God. And you can say, yes, I know, but. I didn't read a but in there. It says, remember. Remember the Lord your God because he is the one who gives you the power to be successful in everything that you do. Many times we think it's our strength and our power and our, you know, our wisdom. But no, it's all God. He gets the glory for everything that we do. Amen? Everything that we do, wherever he positions us, he's going to get the glory because he is the one who has empowered us. Amen? See, you might be in your job right now. And you might be facing some difficulties. You might be going through struggles. You might be going through stuff. Amen? But you go back to the word of God that says, I will remember the Lord my God because he is the one who gives me power to succeed. He is the one who gives me favor above all else. He is the one who lifts me up. He is the one who promotes me. See, we we have to go back to the beginning. Remember. Remember the Lord your God. Remember, he is the one. When you need wisdom, ask of him. When you don't know how to do something, ask the Holy Spirit. You are not by yourself. You have been chosen, amen? You are chosen with a purpose. And so we have to remember that we have power because the Holy Spirit is upon us. Amen? We are not powerless. We are endued with power. And not only power just to live life, but power to be a blessing to others. See, God wants to bless you so that you can be a blessing to somebody else. How can you give to others when you yourself don't have anything to give? Every good father, every earthly father loves to give to his children. How much more our Heavenly Father? And we go on to to read, it says, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. See, he wants to establish his blessing upon your life. But you have to remember the Lord your God. If you can't be faithful 
with the 10 cents out of the dollar that's in your pocket today, you're not going to be faithful with the $100 that he wants to give you next week. You can't be faithful when you want to be or when you're going through hard times. Many times people give and they say, well, I gave. Are you giving faithfully and consistently? Because my God doesn't lie. My God is faithful to his word. Amen. But you have to work the word. You have to work the word. You can't just decide when things are going rough that you run to him and the rest of the time you're living for yourself. We live for Jesus every day, 24-7, when people are looking and when people aren't looking. Hallelujah. So be faithful. Remember, it is God who puts you there. It is God who promotes you. It is God who brings the increase. Amen? See, God has to be above everything else. God has to be your priority. God has to be your number one. You don't move unless he says move. You know, just recently, um, this young man was challenged with something. And he had to make a very difficult decision because his job was going to pull him away from God. And he had made a vow before the Lord that nothing would be placed above his God. And so now his job wanted to change things around, wasn't going to be able to be at church, wasn't going to be able to serve God, wasn't going to be able to do anything. And so he had a very difficult decision to make. Because in the natural, and I'm telling you, be led by God. Don't go quit your job tomorrow. <laughs> Amen. This is God speaking. God told him, leave it. Now he has a family, he's got to support his family, there's still responsibilities, but God said leave it. And God has been faithful to send the ravens when he needed it the most. God has been faithful. He has not lacked a single day in his life. His family has not lacked. But see, there, is, there are certain things that you have to put back in order, and that's putting God first above all things. Your job is not your God. See, there's a season when God speaks, the greatest thing we can do is obey. It might not make sense here, but in here, it's saying just do it. And I'm going to tell you, they've been more blessed today than they've been all their years. How many of you can attest to that? God's faithful. But you have to remember the Lord your God. You have to remember he is the one who gives you the power. He is the one who causes things to work together for your good. He is the one who speaks to others to go and be a blessing to you so that he would be glorified. What is God speaking to you? You know, there, there's things that God made us, might have spoke to you that you needed to release, whether it be a word, whether it be something physical, whatever it is, but you've been holding on to it because you're judging according to what you see. God didn't say, well, look, let's see, what, what do you think? He didn't want your opinion. <laughs> he spoke to you to do it because there's breakthrough in your release. Many times we're, you know, th there's that picture with the little girl holding the little teddy bear and Jesus is asking for it. And behind his back, he has this bigger teddy bear, something greater for her. And that's the way we are sometimes. We look at what's in our hands and we think it's so big. But what God has for you is so much bigger. But you have to release it. Amen. Go with me to Proverbs 10, New King James Version. Hallelujah. Proverbs 10, 22. It says, the blessing, can you all read it with me? The blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. It's the blessing of God upon your life that makes you rich. Now, it's really quiet. I can feel the... I can feel it. It's okay. It's okay. 
See, the world has taught us that riches is only money. We've been so taught by culture, society, that to be rich means to have money. But the blessing of God, he makes you rich spiritually, physically, mentally, socially, and financially. Amen? In every area. And there is no sorrow with the blessing of God. Amen? There is no weeping because your family is broken. There is no weeping because you're sick and destroyed. There is none of that happening. Because the blessing of God makes you rich spiritually, physically, mentally, socially, and financially. Don't limit the blessing to only finances. When God wants to do something so much greater and so much bigger in your life, it makes no, you know, many, many people have, have wealth, have finances, but their marriage is broken. They're sitting alone, depressed on every pill that can be. That's not the blessing of God. You are more rich here today than many out there are right now. But you have to see yourself the way God sees you. You have to see that the blessing of God is upon me. You know, every day when you wake up, you lay hands on yourself and say, the blessing of God is upon me. Amen? He has equipped my hands to prosper. Everything that I touch shall prosper in Jesus' name. I hear his voice and I follow his voice. Amen? The voice of a stranger I do not follow. So you have to see the blessing of God is not just stuff. It's not things. It's not a, what kind of car you drive, what kind of house you have. That's, you know, that's the least of it. God will give you all that because he's a good father, but he wants you spiritually rich. He wants you to be so full of his word that wherever you go, your, your joy is not determined by what you have or what you don't have. You know, and I'm going to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just throw this in, no charge. Don't go into debt trying to show the people you love that you love them for Christmas. Don't, debt is a curse. And we are declaring that this place is debt free, that every family that comes in through those doors is debt free, that God is going to supernaturally break every curse of debt. The greatest thing that you can give your family, your kids, is you. So don't go into debt trying to, to please somebody else. Bake them a cookie. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Do what you can with what you have and believe God for the things that you need. Amen. So priorities matter. It's putting him first. Now go with me to Psalms 112. And this is one of my favorite verses here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 112, verse 1 through 3, it says, Praise the Lord. How joyful are those who fear the Lord and delight in obeying his commands. Their children will be successful everywhere. An entire generation of godly people will be blessed. They themselves will be wealthy. And their good deeds will last forever. Amen. Now, this is a generational blessing. Amen? This is not just what you're doing. But first and foremost, we read how it says here, praise the Lord. You can't have a sour face and say, I'm praising God on the inside. <laughs> because when your heart is truly thankful... It just comes out of you. You're praising the Lord whether you get good news or bad news. Amen? Praising God requires you to actually open your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus. You're so good, Lord. Thank you, Father, that there's more for me than against me. Thank you, Lord, that you are with me. Father, I praise you through every circumstance. I praise you through every situation. Praising God is not just on the inside. Well, God knows I love him. I think football knows that you love it more. <laughs> yeah. 
You know, you guys have football season, but I have Hallmark season. I'm just letting you all know. <laughs> but above all things, he is exalted. He wants you to enjoy all things. Amen? He wants you to take pleasure in what he's giving you. But he has to be glorified and magnified above everything. Amen? Above everything. And see, as we praise the Lord, then joy comes in. Why? Because we fear God. And I'm not talking about we're scared of God. No, there is a reverence, reverence in obeying him. There is joy when you do the right thing. There's no regret in knowing you did what was right before God. There's actually joy and peace. You can sleep at night because you know you did what was right before the Lord. Amen? See, we don't compromise those things. We don't compromise those things. Hey. <laughs> so there's joy in those who fear God, and they delight in obeying his commands. It is not a burden to obey Jesus. Many people feel like, well, if I come to Jesus, I got to stop doing this, and I got to stop doing that, and, you know, I can't do, you know what? When you fall in love with Jesus, you don't want to do that. You don't need somebody telling you, stop it, because your, your relationship, you know, when you fall in love with someone, you, there are, it's all about that person. You're not looking anywhere else. Because you found true love. So when you encounter Jesus, you don't want to do anything that's going to separate you from him. Anything that's going to hinder your walk with him. Anything that's going to stop you from praising him. Because it's very difficult to praise God when you know what you did last night was just wrong. It's hard, but you know, he's a merciful God. He loves you. And it doesn't matter what you did yesterday, what you did a week ago, what you did even this morning. <laughs> Just come to him, and he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He will forgive you of all your sins because he is a good God. And so we, we see here, there's joy in obeying God. There's joy in hearing him and knowing that you're doing what he wants you to do. Amen. The next verse says, their children will be successful everywhere. Amen. Now, this is a generational blessing. You might be successful today because of what your mother or your grandmother prayed for yesterday. Not because you have all the wisdom in the world. Not because you know how to do everything. No, it's because the prayers that you're, the people before you that got saved, that went before God and did everything that was right before the Lord, the Lord because they went, now you have success in your life. So you're saying, well, well that's good. I, I can do that. But what you do today matters to the generations that will come after you. See, you can choose not to serve God. That's your life. You get to choose whatever you want to choose. But it's the generations, your kids, your grandkids that come after you that will have to live with the consequences of your choices today. Amen. And that's deep. That's deep. Because you're not only affecting yourself, you're affecting those that come after you. Amen. But it's so hard living for God. No, it's not. You just need to get out of the way. You just need to, you know what? You're going to fall a couple of times. It's okay. Get back up. You're going to miss it a couple of times. It's all right. Get back up. You're going to get angry at times. Lord, forgive me. You're going to have moments, amen? But that does not disqualify you. Imagine if you, you know, those moms that have children, if you're, you're, your child just makes a mess and throws flour everywhere in the kitchen and in the furniture. You don't throw them out of the house. What parent would do that? What loving mother or father would throw your kid out of the house because they made a mess? And sometimes we feel that God does that to us, but he doesn't. 
He cleans you up lovingly, and he pulls you closer to him. Why? Because he loves you. He loves you, and the more you spend time with him, the more you begin to change. The more you don't want to do those things that mess you up. The more you don't want to look at those things that are a distraction. So your children will be successful everywhere. An entire generation of godly people will be blessed because you obeyed God. You're not changing just your family. You're changing an entire generation because you said yes to God and because you decided you're going to serve God above all things. God's not looking for perfection. He wants you just the way you are. He knows everything about you, and he still wants you. <laughs> and they themselves will be, what? Wealthy. See, the blessing of God will come upon you because you're serving God, because you're living for God. And you might be saying, well, you know, does God really, I don't, I don't believe God really wants me wealthy. I don't believe, you know, money is the root of all evil. No, it's the love of money that destroys it. Because you, your heart and your love should only be towards him. Money is just a tool. You can build or you can destroy with it. You can advance the kingdom or you can advance hell. It's a tool. God's given you a tool. What you do with that tool is up to you. You're either going to build your kingdom or you're going to build his kingdom. I'm glad the lights are glaring in my eyes because I can't see y'all. <laughs> and that's not even my main message, guys. But God wants to bless you. So that, and we read on in the scripture, it says their good deeds will last forever. Huh. When you are blessed to be a blessing, you can give to every good work. How many times have you said, well, if I only had extra, I would give to that project or I would give to that outreach or, you know, we'd go bless the homeless or, you know, go feed an orphanage or go, you know, God puts these desires in you. You don't just come up with them because he's a loving God and he wants to bless you so that you can give to every good work, not just so you can build your castle, sit in it lonely and depressed. Because you sacrificed your family while getting there. <laughs> Y'all have me for two weeks. I just want you to know. <laughs> so if I offend every, anyone, I'm sorry. If I didn't offend you, I'm still sorry. <laughs> but, you know, like every good child, when you're raising up children, you tell them, no, 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 don't touch that. It'll hurt you. And so many times, what I'm giving you is I'm giving you some truth. I'm not giving you my opinion. I'm showing you what the word of God says because God wants to bless you. God wants to bless you over and above what you can ask, think, or imagine. He knows what you're facing and he still wants to bless you. He wants to exalt you and lift you up so that you can glorify him. With, you know, divine favor is upon you. And others will see it and say, well, how come you got that job? How come you got that promotion? How come you got this? Why did you, you know, and God, Jesus, I serve him. He gets all the glory. See, when God lifts you up, remember the Lord your God. 
Remember, it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. It is he who blesses you. The blessing of God is upon your life. You are not broken. You are not defeated. You might be struggling right now, but that's not where you're going to stay because the word of God declares it. Amen. When the blessing of God is upon you, nothing can hold you back. But you have to know who you are. You have to know what God you serve. You have to know for yourself that God wants to bless you. Not to misuse it, but to advance his kingdom, to give him glory, to be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. Not sacrificing your family. He adds no sorrow to the blessing. You're not going to lose when you're serving God. You're not going to fail when you're serving God. God is good. He wants to pour out upon you. He wants to be glorified through you. Amen? Look at your neighbor and say, God wants you blessed. And look at your other neighbor and say, God wants you blessed. Begin to thank him for the things you have now. Because if you can't thank him for the things you have now, you won't thank him for the things you're waiting for and you've been praying for. Because you can't thank him today. Because you're so busy looking at what you don't have. Thank him today for what you do have. If you have a job, thank you, Jesus. Don't curse your job. Bless your job. Wake up in the morning and say, Lord, they are blessed because I decided to show up. <laughs> they are blessed because the favor of God is upon me. Thank God for what you do have. And even begin to thank him for the things you don't. Thankfulness has to flow. Amen. Be faithful. Be faithful with the little. Sometimes there is a delay in the things you've been asking God for, because you're not ready. It's not God. There's something that God wants to do in you. And you've been asking, Lord, Lord, just give me this, just give me this. If I only had this. And God is preparing your heart to receive it. So if there's a delay, check your heart. If there's a delay in you receiving, ask yourself, Lord, is there something in me that needs to change? Lord, use me to be a blessing to others. Use me to send the evangelist to the nations. Use me to build an orphanage. Use me, Lord. Bless my hands because in all honesty, everything that we have belongs to him. And all he's asking you is to be faithful with your tithe and your offering, putting him above all things. Faithfully. How many of you know that if you go to the gym once a month, there's nothing really happening? <laughs> Some of us want to give once a month and expect for everything to happen. <laughs> I love y'all. Y'all are awesome. <laughs> We got to be faithful and consistent. Amen. Faithful and consistent. Because you are blessed. Amen. You are blessed. When God has declared you blessed, nobody can call you cursed. But it comes putting God first. Amen. But it comes putting God first from your heart. Because how you give matters. The Bible says it. God loves a cheerful giver. So, hallelujah. I got to stop. <laughs> what time is it? 12. Hallelujah. It would be my phone. It keeps doing that. God wants to bless you. But be faithful to remember him as he does. Put him above everything else. 
put him above everything else. Because I, I, I declare it and I, I speak it. You know, yesterday as I was praying, um, I was praying in the spirit and I just, I just felt like there's been a delay in things that should have come to you. Things have, have hindered it from getting to you as quickly as they should have come. But I'm declaring this morning that that's going to break and the angels are going for to deliver what is owed to you. No more delay. Amen? No more delay. It comes in Jesus' name and it comes quickly. I received yesterday as I was praying, I received that word. Because there's, there's things that are owed to you that they said yes to, and now they're saying no to. But when God says yes, no man can say no. So by faith, receive it. No more delay. It comes into your hands quickly in the name of Jesus. And you're going to glorify God, and you're going to testify of the goodness of God. Amen? No more delay. Say no more delay. Amen. Hallelujah.